Is it just me or is YouTube photography in a sorry state? You see, a couple of months ago, I posted a poll to photographers asking which type of videos they like consuming. And the result was a good mix of on-location stuff and cat videos. But at a glance, YouTube seems to hate the normal on-location vlogs, or at least my on-location videos. Everyone here knows that if you want to grow on YouTube as a photographer, you gotta make the gear-related videos or do the same photography tips packaged in a clickbaity way. You know, those videos like, do this to master your camera, or the, I didn't even know that my camera did this only to talk about the exposure triangle. I don't fully blame the creators for all of this. After all, some do this to form a livelihood. I do this so that I can tell single females that I'm a YouTuber. Not the same. But to understand why creators do this, we have to first understand the YouTube algorithm. A video gets pushed out on YouTube if people click on it and watch until the very end. If the signals are right, then you will reach a wider audience. That's why the important metrics to watch out for are the average view durations and the click-through rate. The longer the people watch, then the more money YouTube earns from ad revenue. And this is a very reasonable business model. Thankfully though, YouTube photography isn't totally suffering from another problem in YouTube, which is called the retention editing. You know those videos with all the big explosions, fast-paced editing, and the occasional shouting to make their points appear more credible. The most but it still reinforces another problem. Gear videos and clickbaity titles work because people go on YouTube to search for them, you know, to learn or be informed about something. Then if other creators see a particular type of video doing well, they go ahead and follow it. This causes the proliferation of the same type of content from everyone else. And I'm guilty of this myself. My channel is growing right now because of four or five videos, and they are all gear related. But truly, as a photographer, what I really want to do is to take photos. That's what got me started in this anyway. I took a liking to photography, and I thought it would be just cool to share my adventures to everyone, the places I visit, and the photos that I take. And it will be fun to have people following along the journey. I like gear, but only because they help me get the photos that I want to take. I'm not so passionate in them that I want to keep talking about how many aperture blades this lens has or this camera has insane bird eye autofocus. I think every photographer out there truly believes that gear doesn't matter as much as people think. That's why we get offended whenever we get questions like this. Hey Jen, I look. Oh wow, so what camera do you use? So then, the problem. What's wrong with on-location vlogs? I recently photographed a full moon rising, aligning it with one of the Hong Kong skyscrapers. Totally a shot that I love taking, but it's not a shot that I could make a lot of videos about because, well, it really just ends up looking something like this. Okay, so today is more like a scouting day for me because, well, I've been getting a bit tired of just shooting from the same locations here in Hong Kong. And I think that sometimes scouting is actually a bit more exciting than the actual shoot itself because you don't give yourself any constraints and you're free to just explore, discover new compositions, and be more creative. Well, I think scouting is one of the more enjoyable parts in landscape photography, I think they're a bit more challenging in terms of creating a YouTube topic because for YouTube videos, you tend to have like a centralized topic or a theme to talk about throughout the video. But if you're just scouting without any aim, just looking for compositions, you tend to repeat yourselves because you're basically applying the same concepts that you've learned in photography. So while hiking up, I saw that ICC, the tallest skyscraper in Hong Kong, is quite prominent and isolated with some free background space behind. So I, I was trying to check whether there's going to be a potential moon alignment uh, in the future from this exact spot. Yeah, after making a few of those, I realized that after I started photography, I watched less and less photography-related YouTube channels. And that's generally because I found the core contents to be very repetitive. Don't get me wrong, they are great tips. But there isn't really a lot to learn, and Pat K said it best that photography is a finite skill. You learn your camera settings, practice your compositions, and understand visual flow. That's really it. You can only package the same concepts again and again in so many ways. Now this all sounds very negative, you know. Is YouTube killing creativity and passion for chasing for views? Well, not really. <laughs> you see, I think a YouTube video, not necessarily photography related, has to be educational, informative, or entertaining. Photographers like Simon Dontremont master the art of making watchable and clickable educational videos. James Popsis and Thomas Heaton combine their entertaining personalities with their own personal photography philosophies. These photographers have what you call an unfair advantage of having their years of professional experience behind them. If you don't have those, there are still ingredients that you could add that aren't often talked about. 
inspirational and authentic content. This is a trend that I've seen in other niches. Channels like Live of Riza, Megan Tan, Gox Art, and Andrew. They've taken vlogs to the next level, turning them into what you can already consider short films. You know, making their daily routines or doing specific tasks packaged in an inspiring and watchable way. Not to mention their insane filmmaking skills. I mean, just watch this. This is the most important sketchbook I have ever had. I would really love for these types of videos to make it towards the photography niche, you know, sharing the stories, your feelings and emotions and thoughts about photography. On top of the how to, package the why do underneath. And I think the photographer that's closest to this form of style is going to be Theo Crawford. Just very aesthetic mood, composition and visuals, good storytelling on talking about his thoughts about bringing around his camera. If you know of similar photography channels, then do recommend me some in the comments below. I've been trying to add the dimension of storytelling into my own vlogs, although a bit unsuccessful, but actually I really enjoyed making those videos. So comments like this, I really, really appreciate. YouTube is a very, very tough playground and it's easy to get caught up in chasing for the viral videos, getting tons of views to get sponsorships and ad revenue. But I want to be hopeful in this new era of YouTube where more authentic, inspirational and passionate videos are being pushed out even more by the algorithm. So do share with me the stories that you want to be told, the daily challenges that you are facing, or simply the type of videos that you want to watch from me, and let's try to make YouTube about our authentic, passionate selves.